Hey guys, we want to take an opportunity to answer some of your questions that you may have that we haven't covered before. So we put out a post on Facebook. This is the highest rated question. Pinch or thumbs now and just, why? Just to be clear, we're talking about transmitters. Yeah, okay, not the so, bathroom. So, so I'm a pincher. And I'm a thumb guy. So this is kind of cool. And, and you know what? We both get along. We both socialize well in you know, public pre areas. Pretty well. Yeah. So why do you pinch your sticks? Because I think that it gives me much more resolution. I'm like, you don't draw with a pencil, which is the thumb. Granted. It so th yeah. I think that's why I get I think that's it. And I think everyone's different too. I think the size of your hands come into play. And, and the size of the transmitter. And the size of the transmitter, the way the transmitter's laid out. Now, since I'm a thumb guy, I like using my pointer fingers, which I have a lot more dexterity with, uh, to hit my switches. So, you just said it, you have more dexterity in your, in your forefinger. I know, but, but, but I also have but you use dexterity your thumbs? in thumbs. So I, I like using my fingers to hit these switches here. You, you trust your airplane to I, your thumbs? Huh? Yeah, I do. I do. And totally. then you have the really but, important fingers. But here, here's the thing. Switches. Is I'm pinching my, 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 my stick right here. I, it's harder to get full throw because unless you hold the transmitter exactly right, you, you don't have that. Look, like if I hold it too high up, I can't go close throttle as easy. I got to kind of shuffle it around. So really? if you hold it nice and comfortable, huh. you know, I fly the DX8 though, and I have these nice little comfortable rubber grippy things on the back. Yeah. So maybe but, it's just a matter of the transmitter that you get used to too. I but. think it's just the first time you hold the transmitter, I think you already know which yeah. way you're going to fly. If you're a thumb guy, you're going to put your thumbs on there. What David is saying is you're born this way. I think it is. It's like your. It's a very private lifestyle choice. <laughs> and it's like uh, left or right hander. It's just you just find out eventually. I think that neither is better or worse. I exactly. think it's just a preference. Now I will say I see a lot of guys. That I think Joe Smith, Aaron. I think they're all pinchers as well. Oh, they are. Along with our friend Chat. So uh, I think a lot of these three D guys they do fly and they they use the pinch method. So there may be something to it. But frankly, I've always learned off of thumbs. Yeah. So okay. So we have another question here. How do you? take care of your lipos <laughs> and Josh Bixler doesn't. I take this care of my lipos. It's a almost brand new battery. It's not supposed to wiggle like this. Yeah. You see that? It's so puffy. It has one cycle on it. We okay. gave it to Josh okay. after one cycle. It's called stress testing. As a matter of fact, if any manufacturers out there think you have a bulletproof battery, send it over. I'll put it to the test for you. It's horrible. I'm hard on my batteries, okay? I'm, I am. Yeah, yeah because why why don't you take care of your batteries why don't i take well why don't you explain how to take care of your batteries because i always thought i did i mean when, when you take care of somebody you know you, you take care of somebody so maybe i have the mafia way of taking care of my batteries <laughs> okay so what you should do is never to discharge them over 80 percent of their capacity that's probably my first problem i like to fly a lot and i just kind of keep yeah. flying so if you have a thousand milliamp battery yeah. do not ever discharge it more than yeah. to 800 milliamps when you charge it again you can see on the little display yeah. and if your light uh what's called your low voltage cutout kicks on land don't just continue to fly if you flew that long you flew too long that's well, just how it is so why don't they put it on it's not a safety feature so your battery doesn't explode oh well they should have said that ahead of time but you know what i guess i'm the place where batteries go to die <laughs> There you go. Okay, Happy. so ne yeah, next question is, what's your worst crash? What's my worst crash? Do you, yeah. you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I go first, you. All right, all right. There is a, uh, matter of fact, if you guys have seen my picture, I believe it's on RC Group's Facebook, you'll see me hugging a big yellow and oh, black yeah. airplane. Yeah, the, the big monster slowpoke. I love the slowpoke Sport 40. I double-sized it and made a 10-foot version off of a 100cc Ten motor. 10-foot? 10-foot. Ten foot. Oh, Three-piece wow. wings. The thing was my pride and joy. And uh, it was a scratch belt. I love scratch building. We don't get to do that much on flight test, yeah. uh, but I am an avid scratch builder and I do like big gas motors. Um, built this big thing. There's a couple things I neglected and that was when you get a plane that big, the torsion on the fuselage gets a little bit extreme. Oh, it does? I didn't brace like it enough. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the actual torsion of the fuselage. What I should have done is put a foam turtle deck on and then box in my fuselage better. Okay. I didn't do that because I made a removable tail. But long story short, the plane took off beautifully. It was three quarters throttle. It lifted off with plenty of power to spare. Climbed out. Tail started oscillating, oscillating more. It was the most amazing 20 second flight I ever had. But long story short, the thing flew beautifully until it crashed. And uh, thank God we had a big party. It took about three years to build. And, uh, three years? Three years to build, yeah. Wow. yeah. And at the time I wasn't involved with you know tons of model parts and everything. So it took a lot of money out of my own pocket. <laughs> and uh, we had a big party to, to send it off. And luckily we had a big party to help pick up the pieces too. Wow, What's that's yours? harsh. Yeah, <laughs> okay, one of the, it's both my worst and my best crash because uh, it was the last time I got here. Right. And I was just, I think it was the second day I was here. 
Chad's like, oh, do you want to fly my Funjet Ultra? I'm like, sure, why not? I think so, he's still bitter about this one. I've heard about <laughs> it might be. So Chad, don't watch this. Don't watch this. Stop now. It's okay. So uh, he took down the Funjet Ultra. It's hanging on the wall there, all nice, with a hacker motor on it. It's just really nice. And setup. expensive. It was. Yeah. So I, <laughs> we took it and flew it. And Chad's like, oh, I want to take out my radar, radar gun and see how fast it goes. I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So he goes out on the field and clocks it. And I was flying towards him with a three cell, and I got, I think it was 70 miles an hour or something like that, 69 or something. It's like, let's tr try and put a four cell on it. I'm like, uh, sure. So we slapped the four cell on there, didn't change anything else, and I <laughs> threw it off and flew fine. Did a couple of high speed passes and it flew fine. It was really nice. And <laughs> he was pointing it. I was flying towards myself and Chad was in the middle of the field just pointing and I went out far and I turned around and I pointed at it and gave full throttle and it was a perfect like uh, maybe 15 20 degree angle down towards okay. him it's just sh shooting past us screaming and I'm trying to pull up nothing happens I'm trying to roll it nothing happens <laughs> whenever you put a four cell on a speed controller with a linear BEC, it can over overheat and that's the problem when it overheats the radio shuts down and you're not in control anymore this but your motor's still running <laughs> the motor went full throttle and locked there so the thing is just screaming towards Chan and it shoots straight over his head it's like 100 miles per hour it turns around it's just smack into the ground <laughs> it's just pieces everywhere it's just Smack! There's nothing left. There's nothing. The phone just exploded. Oh, so, so the moral of the story is is don't use Chad's side cuts. Don't put a force on Chad's plane and go 100 miles an hour over his head into the ground. <laughs> yeah, it was so. Uh, oh. I felt so bad. It, he had like 10 or 20 flights on it. It was just brand new. It was impeccable. It was just really nice. Oh. Well, you know what, though? He invited you back, so obviously it didn't affect him too badly. No, nah, not too bad. Of course, badly. Dave has to sleep in the basement now. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, and eat hot glue. Another question we got here from a guy, Cathead Biscuit. So, hi. That's a pretty cool name, Cathead Biscuit. <laughs> yeah. I hope that doesn't mean anything bad. Uh, he wonders what the numbers on the mower mean. So yeah, I don't even know that. What do the numbers mean? On the, on the mower here, it says, it's tiny text, but this says 2409-12. Okay. And what that means is the size of the stator. So you stator? can actually, yeah, the st stator, 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 st yeah. stator, stator, stator. Okay, so you can actually measure this. This is 24, roughly 24 millimeters, and then it's that's the first number. The second measurement, the second number, is height of the stator. Okay. So that's nine millimeters. And then the last number is the number of turns on here. This is a burned out motor, so this is not how it usually looks. It's nice and it's usually shiny. Yes, it's nice and shiny usually. So that's the number of turns on it. Okay. And that's what is a turn? And that's one wrapping around that tooth. Okay. So that's just So twelve times around each tooth. Yes. Okay. Very exactly. Cool. So that's what those numbers mean. Very cool. Okay, so I didn't even know that. And what's your yeah. favorite plane? What's my favorite plane? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, you don't have a favorite? Oh, does it fly? Yeah. Okay, if it flies and it's a plane, it's my favorite. No, I love them all. Um, I think it's, honestly... Uh, it's very true because he actually loves everything that flies. Yeah, there's always something good. If it gets in the air, there's something good about that plane. So, uh, you know, obviously that's probably not the best in the review world, but they all are a pleasure to fly and they all have something unique that makes them special. Yeah. How's that for a politically correct answer? That's very political. Okay, you know what? My, my all-around favorite airplane would honestly... Um, I don't want to say the Bixler because people are going to say that. But <laughs> I love the Bixler. From training, training kids how to fly to FPV to just fun hot dogging, you know, it's just a great all-around airplane. So Yeah, and that's yeah. based on the Easy Star. The yes. Like Easy Star, and that's a great plane. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's nice. phenomenal. And the amount of kids we've been able to teach off of that has just been fantastic. So Yeah, yeah. my favorite plane is probably the A2 Discus Launch Glider. I had so much fun with that plane. It flies so well. The trouble is, you can't really buy it unless you're invited to. Really? It's a Swedish guy, two Swedish guys that makes them. Okay. And they just make them in their spare time. Oh, wow. But it flies so good. 
maybe you could ask him right now to send you an HD discus launch glider now that you're in America. Mm. Uh, the trouble is getting the the wing over. It's okay. so ridiculously expensive because it's one and a half meters long. Wow. So, so shipping issues. Yeah, you can't even. You're not allowed to ship it without shipping it with like UPS or yeah. anything. And it's like six hundred bucks oh my to gosh. ship it. It's just it's ridiculous. It's a package that weighs five hundred grams. Just. And it's that expensive, so it's yeah. kind of like you're shipping gold kind of thing. Yeah, so I bought a plane that's hanging in the ceiling. We're going to show you how to disc with launch. Nice. Looking so. forward to it. That's that's something that looks pretty cool. I've never So that's that actually a question from Brandon Schultz. Okay. Uh, you should do a video on a disc with launch glider. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I th oh, we can cover one more. Um, do you fly FPV through your GoPro? Yes, I do. You do? Yeah. I do too. Wow. There you go. See, it's, it's not nice. against the law and they won't take away your birthday and you won't crash. And we fly pretty fast with our Go Pro. Yeah. No, I don't think there's hardly any lag. It works really well, especially when yeah. you fly in 60 frames a second. Okay. The camera, it's really nice. Yeah. I like it. The downside is with the new GoPro, it's not as stable in the software, so you can freeze up. Mm, that's so, not good. No, that's not good. So don't fly it out on anything without return to home yet. It wasn't until I actually put the GoPro on and flew through it that I really got to enjoy the FPV experience. Oh, that's cool. It has a very natural field of view, I mean, in your perspective. It you know, does. It feels so well. Yeah. And you know exactly what yeah. you're filming, too. You yeah. know exactly the results you're going to get and instead of having a different view camera. I just... think you do the same as I do. I actually angle my camera down a little bit, so only one-third of the screen is sky and the two-thirds is yeah. ground. That way it kind of just the is it the aperture you know exposure you're least. not gonna really navigate off the sky you're gonna be navigating off the ground so yeah. oftentimes when I throw it over people put the horizon in the middle and they're like what's going on here yeah it feels so, weird but uh, me, once least. you fly that way I think it gets pretty easy yeah okay so uh, if you want your questions answered just post them on uh, Facebook or YouTube or wherever yeah. we read every single comment we do. you guys make and I'm sorry if we don't respond to everyone but we do read them Yes, and we, we really do. enjoy getting to see your insight, the information, your critique. Is that the right word? Yes. Critiques. And uh, we appreciate every bit of it, and we appreciate you guys. Yeah, so thank you, and keep watching.